Hey, sixth grade, this is Mr. Terry here. I'm going to go over your Tuesday uh, lesson over elements and compounds and the periodic table. I'm going to give you the lesson by video today. And um, before I begin the lesson, I'm going to show you where you can find everything. So first, what you're going to want to do is log on to Canvas. And you'll log into your course. And you will find Tuesday 825, Elements and Compounds Notes. Here I have the instructions listed for you. In this assignment, I'm going to provide you two documents. One is a blank copy of the notes. If you want to print these out and fill them out as you listen to the video, you are welcome to do that, and I encourage you to do that. Uh, I also understand that computer paper and computer ink is expensive, and some of you might not have printers at home. So I'm also going to provide a completed copy of the notes. Please keep up with these because you will be asked to uh, learn this information and you're going to need to know where it is and study for it when it comes time to take a test but that's uh, a few weeks away so both of these documents will be in canvas for you so let's go ahead and begin our lesson for the day and we're learning about <clears throat> excuse me classifying matter elements and compounds so what is matter matter is anything that has mass or weight and it takes up space so what are some examples of matter? Well, basically anything is matter. Even light can be matter. Um, uh, these weights are matter. A car is matter. Water is matter. You are matter. A cat is matter. A dog is matter. Well, wait, not that dog. This dog is matter. A table, a chair, the air you breathe, and even food. All of these things are matter. Uh, and matter is made of elements. The elements are uh, listed on the periodic table of elements. You're pro maybe you're wondering, well, what is the periodic table of elements? This is all the known material that we know of on Earth and in outer space. Uh, everything that can be described and has characteristics, um, solid metals, gases, things like that, radioactive material, it's all listed here and everything on the periodic table is classified by its behavior and characteristics. Elements are pure substances that cannot be separated into similar substances by physical means. Well how are the elements created? How do they get there? Uh, elements are created when massive stars go supernova. Uh, the, the incredibly powerful explosion of a star going supernova uh, causes elements to be created. They, the atoms smash together and form uh, different elements. So that is how elements are created. And here's just kind of a interesting little look at a periodic table in motion. I just thought this was kind of cool. I put it on here for you. Um, so now let's talk about the elements. What are some examples of elements that are on the periodic table? Well, you have oxygen. That's in the air that we breathe. We have carbon, which is a metal. Uh, you have that in your bones. Uh, iron in, in a magnet or in a nail. Also the iron in your blood. Um, gold is an element. S sulfur in matches. Uh, nitrogen in the soil to help plants grow. Hydrogen, which is in water. If you've ever heard the word H2O, it's talking about water. Two hydrogens and one oxygen. The calcium that's in your bone, that's in milk that you drink, the calcium that's in this milk is actually a metal. I, I don't know if you knew that, but uh, you're actually drinking, when you drink milk, you're drinking uh, small quantities of this stuff right here. Chlorine is an element. Chlorine is used to keep your pool clean. Um, copper, uh, pennies and copper wire. And sodium is an element which is in table salt. More on sodium and table salt later. Anything that is on the periodic table is an element. So what are atoms? Uh, atoms are what make up the different elements. Every element has a different amount of, of um, has different characteristics based on what the atom's structure looks like. No, not that atom. This atom. That is what uh, an, basically how a, an atom is structured. It has uh, a nucleus with uh, uh, protons in the center and neutrons in the center 
and surrounding and basically orbiting every atom are a certain amount of electrons. And every element has a different amount of protons, neutrons, and electrons uh, circling around it. The bigger the element, the heavier the element, the more protons, neutrons, and electrons it has. Atoms are the smallest unit of an element that maintains or keeps the properties of that element. So what are molecules? Molecules are composed of two or more atoms that are joined by chemical bonds. So for example, um, hydrogen gas is two hydrogen molecules. Um, it's, well, hydrogen molecule is two hydrogen atoms bonded together. An oxygen gas molecule is two oxygen atoms bonded together. This number two means how many, it's giving us the number of how many atoms of hydrogen there are. There's two hydrogen atoms in hydrogen gas, two oxygen atoms in oxygen gas, and two nitrogen atoms in nitrogen gas, which forms molecules. Um, some elements are, can also be different when they're chemically combined to form compounds. More on that in just a second. Uh, one, of, one of the compounds that can be formed is this stuff C6H1206. That's sugar. Sugar that's in your kitchen, sugar that's in your sodas that you put in tea or on your cereal. That's what the chemical formula for sugar is. So some compounds that we need to talk about. A compound is a pure substance composed of two or more different elements that are chemically combined. So this first one, CO2. You might have heard the word CO2 before. That is the stuff that after you breathe in, you exhale. Your body pulls out the uh, oxygen and the nitrogen and exhales carbon dioxide, which is one carbon and two oxygens. Uh, another compound that you know very well is salt, NaCl. That is sodium chloride. That is one sodium and one chloride molecule combining to form the compound NaCl, which is the same thing as the salt that you sprinkle on your food. Um, compounds are made of elements in a specific ratio. It's always the same. Uh, they have a chemical formula. So water is H2O. There's always two hydrogens and one oxygen molecule bonded together. Also, there's uh, this little picture of H2O, two hydrogens, one oxygen, H2O. Sorry if my thing here is on the way. OK. More on compounds. Some examples of compounds would be uh, H2O, like we talked about. This is what a molecule of water would look like. One molecule of water forms a compound, H2, which is two hydrogens, one oxygen. Uh, here's some other things. We have water, carbon dioxide, sugar, baking soda. Um, they all form these chemical compounds. Remember that if you're looking at a compound, it's going to have one or it's going to have two or more elements. So every time you see a new element, you're going to see a capital letter. And if you have two or more capital, capital letters in a formula, that is going to form a compound. If you only see one capital letter, that just means it's an element. OK, you are technically a compound. Yes, you, the sixth grader who's listening to this lesson right now, you are a chemical compound. And I bet you didn't know you actually have a chemical formula. This is a human being's chemical formula. Kind of interesting right there. Bunch of numbers. Um, pretty big numbers, actually. Um, that's actually the amount of carbon molecules you have in your body. 100,000, million, billion, 12 billion carbon molecules in your body. So you're, you're made of a, mostly carbon. That's why you've heard humans refer, referred to as carbon-based life forms. So after looking at this, is your mind blown like this, guys? Are you freaking out right now like this guy? Or is this you? Well, whichever one you are, too bad, because you have to learn it anyway. OK, so a little bit more on compounds. I'm almost done here. Uh, compounds can only be separated by chemical bonds, uh, not physical methods. You can't cut a water molecule in half with a knife. But through a chemical process, you can separate the hydrogen and oxygen from each other and turn the hydrogen and the oxygen into gas. Um, so an example, like, like I said, water. 
At room temperature, hydrogen and oxygen are both gases, but when they're chemically combined, they turn into water, which is a liquid at a room temperature, and it's not flammable. Hydrogen and oxygen gas by themselves, very, very, very flammable, very dangerous. You have to be careful around that stuff. Uh, some other stuff. Sodium is a very dangerous um, uh, element uh, that will uh, burn and ignite when it gets close to water. Chlorine is very dangerous gas. You don't want to be breathing that stuff in. It will kill you quickly, but when they combine chemically, they form salt, which is the same stuff on your uh, dinner table right now that you put on your food when it needs extra salt. Uh, some interesting things uh, about water. It, it is able to be uh, separated through a process called electrolysis. Um, the, uh, the reaction between sodium and chloride actually forms a, uh, a bit of a heat and smoke and it's kind of a almost like a little explosion but afterwards salt will be uh, left over and um, in the words of our friend uh, Plankton here what in the name of electrolysis? So hopefully after this lesson you're not like this baby right here where you're just completely falling out bored and tired uh, hopefully you've learned a little bit about the periodic table and elements and compounds. That is the end. We will not get into mixtures and solutions right now. Um, <clears throat> keep these notes. Watch this video again if you have any questions. And I am always available by email if there's anything you don't understand. Talk to you all later. Bye.